everyone, my name is Tandiwe Moro and this is my YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about how to care for your gear. I've broken several pieces of gear over the years and I have had some last really long over several years that I've been a photographer and I just kind of want to share what my experience has been in taking care of gear and some good tips and tricks that I've learned on how to take care of your gear. If this is your first time watching the channel, thank you for watching and be sure to hit the subscribe button to get videos like this every Monday and Thursday. So, how do you care for your gear? One of the biggest things I've learned, number one, is get insurance for your gear. When I was starting out, I thought insurance would be so expensive that I just couldn't afford it and I'd just pray every time I had to take my gear out with me. But recently, the Photographers Association of Kenya, or PAC, has introduced very affordable insurance for its members. So to get insurance with them, the first thing you need to do is become a member, which costs 3,000 shillings, and you can find their details on their Facebook page. I'll put a link to that in the description box below. And if you're a student, the membership fee is actually only 1,000 shillings, but you need to provide proof of your studenthood, of being a student. <laughs> <laughs> studenthood. <laughs> Have your student ID. So if you're a student, you need to have your student ID so they can verify that you're one. The second thing I've learned about taking care of your photography gear so it can serve you for many years is always put your gear in a case. Have cases for everything. I always carry around my cameras and other gear in a camera bag, but even if I'm leaving stuff on the shelf for long-term storage, so maybe it's a lens that I only use once in a while, I try and keep them in cases to protect them from dust and just in case they drop or get knocked around, I know they're well cushioned. So these are the cases that I use. They usually come with the lens when you buy it, so they're perfect for the size of the lenses that you have. And it's just a soft case with like foam on the inside to make sure that your lens is well cushioned. What about if you don't have a camera bag or it's not a priority to buy one right now? Please just don't put your camera directly into a backpack. Make sure at least you wrap it up in a, a fluffy sweater or um, one of those jackets that has cushioning inside. Because even if you want to sell your gear in the future, just doing that, make sure that it doesn't have any chipped paint or any scratches on it and it just makes it look overall much better over the years on top of actually preventing it from breaks in case you drop your bag or somebody bumps your bag. Another principle that I've talked about before that I try and observe to take care of my gear is to keep it out of direct sunlight. Sunlight gets very hot very quickly for your gear and remember most of your gear has batteries inside so sunlight can mess with your batteries. So if I'm shooting outdoors I always try and keep my gear bag I first try and keep my gear inside the bag and then I try and keep my gear bag under a table or somewhere in a shaded area under a tree to make sure that there's no direct sunlight cooking the equipment inside. If there's no shade like a table or a tree, I'll actually take my jacket and at least place it over the gear to make sure that cuts out some of the heat that the sun will be putting out on my gear. When it comes to long-term storage, there's two more things that I like to practice. Number one is to keep my gear in a dust-free environment. Try and keep it in a room that is very cool, possibly without any windows, so that there's minimal dust in the inside your gear. Because over time, you know, if you put something on a shelf, it collects gear and it collects dust. And your gear is very sensitive to dust. You don't want your lenses or your camera sensors getting dust. So try and store it in a dust free environment. Like I said before, putting it in cases helps solve that problem to some extent, but just also choose a room that has minimal dust inside it and clean it frequently. The second thing I do for long-term storage is I always take my batteries out of whatever gear I'm leaving on the shelf for a couple of months. You don't want your batteries to corrode and to react with the contacts inside your camera or inside your flash so if you know you're not going to be using something for one month or two months store it with the batteries next to it just to make sure that there's no leaking of your batteries inside your gear another good practice is to always turn off your camera when you're changing anything you need to switch off your gear because it's all polarized so if you change your battery for example when your camera is on it's going to attract dust into your camera which is something that again you don't want to do so switch gear off when you're changing anything. Speaking of dust, dust is a real issue when changing your lenses and it's something sometimes you can't avoid. So let's say you're shooting outdoors and there's a lot of wind and it's a place without grass, a lot of dust will kind of blow into your lens and onto you and your camera. So one of the things I try to do whenever changing lenses is to make sure I step away from the dusty situation 
Sometimes it may not be possible, but if it's possible, I'll try going to a more shielded area, change my lenses and then come back out into the action just to minimize the amount of dust that gets into my sensor. Moving away from cameras, part of the gear you'll invest in as a photographer is your computers and all the chargers you'll need for your different gear. Now we all know KPLC has unreliable service and sometimes there can be a power surge and I've lost chargers to power surges before and it's a painful experience having to buy a um, charger when the other one was working just fine because you forgot to put in a surge protector on all your sockets. So invest in surge protectors just to make sure that your gear, if there's a power surge for some reason, your gear is safe and all you're replacing is a surge protector and not your whole computer, which is painful. The last thing I want to talk about is when you're actually shooting on location or in studio, wherever you are, how do you protect your gear from theft? I always have somebody come with me when I'm shooting and the sole purpose is to sit and watch the gear to make sure that nobody walks away with your lenses or the smaller pieces of gear. Also to make sure that you don't forget anything when you finish shooting. Usually after I'm done shooting, I'm really tired and I may just forget the smaller pieces like my memory cards. But um, having somebody there makes sure that you avoid that problem and it's just a deterrent to any thieves out there. Wedding photographers, this is especially important for you because you're in an environment, and event photographers as well, because you're in an environment where there's many strangers, there's a lot of activity going on, and you may get so focused on shooting, you may actually forget to check if your gear is okay, or you may have so much gear that it's not possible to carry everything on your back or on your person at all times. So having somebody whose sole job is to watch your gear really does go a long way in keeping your gear safe from wandering hands. When it comes to storing gear when you're traveling, I avoid leaving my gear in the car for extended periods of time because the car gets really hot and you run into the same issues as leaving your gear in direct sunlight. So sometimes it's better to put it in the boot of your car, but in the cabin there's sun shining into the windows and it heats up really fast. Even better, just take it with you. That's also good for security because people can break into your cars. I've heard of very many cases where photographers have been robbed um, when they went into the supermarket and left their gear in the car. So when you can, just take it all with you. Under the insurance that I have with PAC, I know that they will not uh, pay for any gear that was stolen when it was stored in the cabin of the car. They'll only insure gear or pay for gear that was stolen when it was in the boot of the car. So that's another reason to just keep your gear in the back of your car as opposed to on the back seat or the front seat of your car. If I'm at a shoot that requires me to stay overnight at a hotel, number one, I'll always try and make sure that I pick a place that is looks reasonably safe to stay at. And you can explain this to your clients and say, because we're traveling with very expensive, sensitive equipment, we would prefer to stay in a place that has good security. But above and beyond that, I try not to leave any gear in the hotel room because you may have the cleaners come in or you may have, for whatever reason, people can access your hotel room. So just don't leave gear with you. Again, take it with you whenever possible because there you can see it, you know exactly who has it and what it's doing. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about keeping gear safe and good practices for caring for your gear, if you have any comments or you have any stories about how you've kept your gear safe or any near misses with protecting your gear, please let us know in the comment section below. Or if you want to interact with me on other social media, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and off my website, www.tandiwemoreo.com. Any gear that I've mentioned in this episode is listed in the description box below. It's right under the subscribe button for those of you who are first time viewers of the channel. Make sure to subscribe to get videos every Monday and Thursday. For those of you who are returning viewers, thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of your journey. Please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it so I know more of what you want to hear about. That's it for now. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.